Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're taking a look at an ordinary thing you probably have in your kitchen right now, salt. But we're not talking about its kitchen uses. Instead, we're diving into salt as a mystical symbol, something deep and holy. If you've ever wondered why salt is brought up in the Bible or how it could be viewed as a spiritual tool, keep watching because this is gonna be really interesting. Now, we're going on a journey back in time to the Old Testament, specifically to the book of Leviticus. It may not be your top pick for a bedtime read, but stick with me. In Leviticus chapter 2, verse 13, God gives a pretty specific command. Season all your grain offerings with salt, and don't leave out the salt of the agreement of your God from your grain offerings. Put salt on all your offerings. Hold on, did God just mention an agreement of salt? Yes, he did. What's interesting is that this isn't just a random mention of a flavor enhancer. The importance of salt in old times was huge. It wasn't just about making food tasty, it was about keeping things fresh. Salt could stop things from going bad, making it a really valuable item. And in the context of the Bible, its importance wasn't just in keeping food from going bad. Did you know that salt symbolizes something constant and unchangeable, a thing that can endure the passage of time? a promise. In simpler words, a promise is a divine pact, a holy agreement between God and his folks. It's like the ultimate deal. It's intriguing and meaningful that God selected salt to represent this promise. Here's a fun fact. Salt was used in sacrifice rituals to signify the sturdy, enduring, and pure nature of this promise, a lot like the traits of salt itself. It wasn't meant to lessen or decay. It was made to last forever. The story gets more interesting in Numbers chapter 18, verse 19, when God announces, Whatever is put aside from the holy gifts the Israelites give to the Lord, I give to you and your kids as your continuous share. It is a forever promise of salt before the Lord for both you and your children. Did you notice? A perpetual promise of salt. God is openly saying that this promise, symbolized by salt, is supposed to be eternal, not just for the folks of that time, but for all future kids. So, the question pops up, why salt? Why not gold or any other valuable stuff? Unlike gold, which can be melted, or silver, which can rust, salt stays the same. Salt's steady, it stays the same. And when it's pure, it doesn't change. This makes it a great symbol of God's promises, which are strong, lasting, and trustworthy. But here's the cool part. This isn't just an old tradition that nobody cares about now. Actually, the idea of a salt agreement has big meanings for us today. Think about this. If God's agreement is like salt, it means that his promises to us are kept safe, perfect, and forever. In a world that's always changing and unpredictable, the idea of a forever, unbreakable agreement gives us a lot of comfort. It lets us know that we can always trust in God's promises, no matter what happens. Also, don't forget about the real-life part of this, Back in the day, salt was super important. People even fought wars for it, and it was used as a type of payment. You know the word salary? It comes from sal, the Latin word for salt. So, when God uses salt as a symbol, he's not just picking something random. He's choosing something that everyone back then would have known was priceless and needed. We're about to dive into a real intense story from the Bible, Sodom and Gomorrah. And trust me, you'll never think about salt the same way again. Now, let's lay down the background. We're in chapter 19 of Genesis, where things get seriously dramatic. The story is all about Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities known for being real bad. Their bad behavior was so over the top that God decided he had to wipe them out completely. But then, things get even more intense when God sends two angels to warn Lot the only good guy in the city, telling him to get his family out before everything goes down. Picture this. Lot, his wife, and their kids are racing against the clock, trying super hard to get out of the city. The angels tell them one very important thing. Don't look back. It seems like a simple enough rule, but then the story takes a spooky turn. Lot's wife, for reasons we don't know, doesn't listen and looks back at the city. Just like that, she turns into a pillar of salt. But why salt of all things? Why does the Bible tell us this? This isn't just some random detail, it's loaded with meaning. In this setting, salt stands for punishment. 
It's like a last unchangeable penalty. When Lot's wife didn't pay heed to the divine command, she wasn't just looking back at a town. She was looking back at wrongdoing, at wickedness, at all the things God was destroying. And in that moment, she was judged. If we go deeper into this, the change of Lot's wife into a pillar of salt wasn't only about punishment. It was a real example of what happens when you hold on to past sins and don't obey. Salt, as we've talked about before, is a thing that keeps stuff from rotting. So, in a way, Lot's wife had turned into a lasting symbol of what happens when you ignore God's rules. She was basically a never-ending statue, a forever reminder showing the results of looking back. But there's another part to this story. Salt doesn't just mean punishment, but it also works as a cleaner. Think about how we use salt now, to clean, to heal cuts, to purify. In olden days, salt was used in rituals to clean and protect from evil. So, when Lot's wife was changed into a pillar of salt, it wasn't just about punishment, but it also meant purification. God was getting rid of the sin, cleaning the land, and making sure that what was left was clean, free from the dirt of the past. What if I told you salt's twin role, acting as a cleaner and a symbol of trial, pops up a lot in the Bible? It's like a two-sided blade. It can guard and keep safe, but it can also judge and wipe out. This two-sided nature is clear in the tale of Sodom and Gomorrah. The towns were wiped out, burned to the ground by fire and sulfur. But Lot's wife turned into a long-lasting symbol, preserved in salt, which reminds us what happens when you break divine rules. This is where everything ties up. Ever wondered why salt symbolizes God's never-ending promise and purity? But in the Sodom and Gomorrah story, it shows the results of breaking that agreement. This acts as a reminder that God's judgment is as real as his promises and that salt can also keep the results of our actions. So, salt isn't just a dormant component in these stories, but more of a strong, active and deeply meaningful one. Whether it's protecting a covenant or acting as a witness to judgment, salt in the Bible is more than just a taste booster. It's a spiritual power, a symbol with meaning and effects that outlive time. Here's the deal. Salt's been used for more than just cooking and ceremony stuff for ages. I'm not just talking about making food tastier, but using it for protection, cleaning stuff, and even, get this, exorcisms. Yeah, you heard right. Exorcisms. People believe it's got power to clean and guard against bad stuff. Let's start with the old idea of protection. Folks thought salt could guard against any bad stuff, kind of like an old-timey security system. It could keep away bad things and even bad feelings. It wasn't weird for people to throw salt around their homes, especially near doors and windows, to keep away any unwanted spirits. They believed salt could stop evil in its tracks, making an invisible line that no bad energy could get through. This isn't just some random belief. It comes from old writings and traditions. For example, think about the story of Elisha in the Second Kings book, from verses 19 to 22. The people of Jericho came to Elisha because their water was bad and their land was barren. Elisha's fix? He threw salt into the spring and said what God told him, I've cleaned this water. From now on, it won't cause death or make the land barren. And the water was cleaned right away. The salt wasn't just some random thing. It showed how God could clean and protect. Let's jump into the topic of exorcisms, where stuff gets real intense. In different religious traditions, salt has been used as an important part in rituals to drive away demons and get rid of nasty spirits. The thinking's pretty simple. If salt can clean and guard, then it should be able to kick out the bad, right? Salt's often mixed with water to make holy water, which has been a big player in exorcisms and blessings. This salted water would be splashed around the place to clean it up and chase out any leftover evil spirits, kind of like a spiritual cleaner that purifies the place and leaves no space for any bad vibes. The connection between salt and spiritual battles is interesting because it goes beyond what salt physically does. Sure, salt can preserve and purify, but in these rituals, it gets a bigger job, acting as a tool against unseen bad guys. 
It's a reminder that even the most ordinary things can have a deep spiritual meaning. Even today, lots of people still use salt for spiritual protection, whether it's a little salt in the corners of a room, a line of salt across a doorway, or carrying a tiny bag of salt for protection. These habits have been kept and given through years, highlighting the lasting belief in the might of salt. This backs up our previous chats about how salt is shown in the Bible. As salt was a sign of a strong promise and a tool of heavenly judgment, here it stands for spiritual strength and defense. It's the usual thing that connects all these ideas. No matter if it's used in a promise, judgment, or fight against bad, salt stays a strong and mighty symbol. In Matthew 5, verse 13, Jesus called his followers the salt of the earth, a phrase that might seem like an easy metaphor, but it has deep meanings worth looking at. When Jesus labeled his disciples with this word, it wasn't just a cool name. He was pushing them to embody the basic qualities of salt, qualities that are key for a life full of faith and aim. You won't believe salt with its amazing knack to influence whatever it comes into contact with can totally change a meal's flavor with just a bit, transforming something bland into something lively and full of energy. In the same way, Jesus was telling his followers that they have the potential to affect the world around them. They were supposed to be a small yet powerful force that makes the world better, adding worth and making life more purposeful. It's a call to action, to be active, to make a change and to stop bad behavior in society, just like salt stops food from rotting. But there's a catch to this comparison. Jesus didn't just name them as the salt of the earth. He also gave a warning. He asked that if the salt loses its taste, how can it become tasty again, explaining that it's good for nothing but to be thrown out and stepped on. This is where the comparison gets serious. Salt, in its purest form, never loses its flavor. But if it's mixed up with other elements, it can become less potent. This is a strong reminder for us to stay true to our purpose, keeping our actions pure. If we let ourselves be influenced by the things around us, we risk losing our effectiveness, our chance to make a positive change. Jesus told his followers, and by extension all of us, to keep our spiritual honesty no matter what's going on. This idea nicely connects with earlier talks about salt as a symbol of agreement, judgment, and spiritual battle. Just like salt was important in those situations, it's also key in the lives of believers. It's not just about our faith, but also how we show those beliefs in our daily lives. Do we keep goodness? Do we make life more interesting? Do we hold on to our beliefs, even when it's tough? Being the salt of the earth means being a changer, bringing light into dark places, and being a good force in a world that needs it. It's about living in a way that lets others see and feel the difference and inspires them to look for that same light and life. This ain't just a one-shot test, but an everyday promise. Each day, we get the opportunity to be the salt of the world, keeping what's good and right and touching the world in a way that praises God. This is a big task, yet also a privilege and something we can all do in our own unique style, no matter where we are or what our job is. We're grateful for your ongoing involvement as we explore the secret Christian truths about salt. If you thought this video was useful, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more of the same stuff. Your help is super important to us. God bless everyone, and may we all try to be the salt of the earth in everything we do.